Hey y'all, Jim Panky here. I wanted to do a video today and show you how to change the strings on your banjo. It may be time for you to do that and you may not be exactly sure how to go about it. So I'm hoping this video will help you figure it out. Uh, you may have been playing a little while and your strings don't sound like they ought to. Maybe they're a little dull or maybe they don't stay in tune the way they did or maybe they just look kind of gross. <laughs> it's time to change them. You're going to need a few things. First and foremost, you will need banjo strings. You'll need a five string set. These are light gauge. You can make them whatever gauge you want. You can try a different gauge, uh, usually mediums and lights. You will need a tuner, electronic tuner. You can use a clip on like this, or you can use one that you've downloaded for your phone. Get some handy dandy little side cutters, little angle cutters, something to cut the string ends with. And you'll probably want your, your banjo picks. And get a pencil. I'll show you what we'll do with that in just a little bit, but you but you'll you might need a pencil. That's pretty much all you need and a place to work. Obviously, I'm in the floor again. Uh it's this is where I kind of work. It gives me plenty of space to move around and I usually set my instrument on top of my banjo case. It just gives me a nice safe place to work. So I'm going to reposition so you can see a little better what I'm doing and I'm going to show you the process that I do to change my strings. So I'll be right back. Before we get into this, if you could take just a second and click the subscribe button, that would help. It also gives you notifications when I post new videos. So give that a whirl. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Tell me what brand of strings that you like to use. If you got a favorite, I'd like to hear. All right, we've repositioned. Let me zoom you down here to the banjo, and I'll show you the steps that I take when I'm restringing. I usually start at the fifth string and go five, four, three, two, one. Replace them one at a time. Replace them one at a time so I don't have to move my bridge. And it just keeps everything a little, a little more tidy. Uh, I usually just flip open the tailpiece cover. And then I'm starting on five, so I'm just going to loosen this fifth string. Before I do, I'll show you this. See, so you, you can see there's a little, little plastic sleeve on that fifth string. I'm not worried about that so much. We're not going to keep that. Usually on an import banjo, you will see those little plastic sleeves. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove that and just loosen this up and, and take that string off. I like to wind them up when I'm done, just to be neat. That way they're not running around here in the floor. And just there you go, wound up. And lay that aside. And then we're gonna get our next string get it out of the package uh, the, the string packages will tell you what what gauge string you're looking at so what i'm doing here let me pull over here in my lap a little bit i'm just gonna the, there's a loop end on these strings maybe you can see that and uh i just Sometimes I'll take a pencil and make sure that loop is nice and open, but you don't have to do that. And then it just hooks around the loop here on the, on the end. There's a little peg, the loop hooks around that peg on the tailpiece. Then this string needs to go under that little foot right there. So it needs to look sort of like that. Clear, okay. Now, how much slack do we need in our string? That's a question that gets asked me a lot. I've got a, I've got a method here that I think will help you out a bunch. So let me show you what I do. So the hole on this peg, I like to turn that hole to where it's, I guess, across perpendicular to the neck at a 90 degree angle. So if I'm looking straight down the neck, I, the hole is right here running across the neck. I go ahead and put my string through that hole. All right, I'm going to do this several times, so you'll see 
several, you'll have several opportunities to see this. And I put it through there and I loop around the string backwards. So I pulled pretty much all the tension out of the string. I'm looping around the post backwards. Watch, watch me move. I'll do this up close too. And then under the string, keep being sure to keep that backwards. You see, I've come backwards. Now I'm gonna lift up and come back around the string the right way and then tighten the string. That will lock that string into place. Before I get it completely tight, I like to take my pencil and in that nut right there, if you have a nut there, put just a little graphite in that nut, slide your string in there, and now you can tune it up. So you could use your tuner for that if you wanted to. I just kind of do this by ear to begin with. That's close enough. And now you've got this extra end of string. Let's cut that off. So we just use our, our little wire cutters. And now that's cut off. And then I just loop this up and put it with my other used string. So before we go any further, that, so we've got one down, four to go. So we are 20% finished other, other than tuning. So I'm gonna reposition so you can see the headstock. And that way you, you can see how I do this wrap. And then, then I'll show you what I do on the tailpiece end too. So let's, let's look at this headstock first. Okay, so hopefully you can see this good. I'm just gonna loosen this string again. Go the right way. You can always tell if you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Should get looser and looser. So we're just gonna loosen that up. Yep, still not loose enough yet. Now I will tell you this, if your strings are just absolutely corroded and gross, you can loosen them up and just cut them if you want to. So anyway, string is off. We'll wrap this up and just, we're just gonna lay it to the side. And then we're just, we're gonna need our fourth string and the packaging should be marked. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook that on this tail piece down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the hole in this peg perpendicular to the neck. I'm gonna get it where it's running sideways and I'm gonna run the string through this hole. Okay, that direction. All right, and I've pulled out pretty much all of the slack. I mean, it's still it's still fairly sloppy, but that's, you don't, you don't want to pull it to tension and you want it tight enough so it doesn't come off the hook at the tailpiece. And then we're gonna go around backwards. See what I've done? I've come around backwards. I'm gonna go under that string, keep coming this direction, and then we're gonna pull it up and go back around that way. I think you can see that really well on that string. Now, before we get this completely tight, I know I'm in the slot, but we can pull that out of the slot. Take your pencil and mark some graphite down in there. Don't worry if you smudge your smudge the nut a little bit. That'll all, that'll all wipe off. And it'll darken up. It's, it's fine. <laughs> And that, that'll make that string. And, and just getting it close. And, and you can put your tuner on there and see if you want to. But you'll have to tune a couple of times. So there we go. We're in tune enough. And now we got this end to get rid of. And so we're going to get rid of that end. All right. So simple enough. It's just a short end, so I'll lay it down here with my scraps. And now I'm going to show you what I do on the tailpiece, because on this Presto tailpiece, there's a couple of other little things that you need to know, or at least one other thing. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, we've repositioned, and we need to loosen the string, so I'm going to loosen our third string. Now look, you, you see that the string goes under this little foot, and then the fourth string goes under this little foot, 
but this has a hole. And that's a holdover remnant from the four string banjo era. And the tailpiece was modified for that fourth, third string. <laughs> and so they just make a hole in that. And that's pretty much standard now. And to save time on winding, I'm actually going to cut this string. <laughs> I don't need it. It's an old string. Or at least that's what we're saying. <laughs> Now we just need our third string. So get our string and, and we can take and make sure that that loop is, is open. We just use a pencil to do that. And then we hook that, we're gonna hook that loop on, on that. But before we do that, on this third string, it's, we, we need to run the string through that hole first. Now, what I like to do, because it's a little hard to grab, is I like to put a little bit of a bend in, in that string right there. Maybe you can see that. And, and that way, when I poke it through the hole, I can now grab it. So grab it, pull it through, and then hook it on that hook, and now we're good to go. And then all we're gonna do is tighten that up at the other end so i want you to watch this again so get our get our hole perpendicular okay you want it perpendicular to the head going to run the string through that hole go ahead and pull it up fairly taut you don't want it completely tight go backwards under the string and then up and back around and then just tension that up. Now I'll tell you where this comes in handy. But before we get it completely tight, what do we do? We're gonna put our pencil in the slot because it makes the strings move a little better. Put that in the slot, there we go. Smudge some of that off. Yeah, I know it's a little darker, but that's okay. And we're just gonna tune up. ish then we're going to cut that cut that off all right well, let's do another string so we're gonna loosen that one up a lot so we're on our second string hey we've only got two to go we're almost done with this job you can tell when it's loose enough there we go. Let's go ahead and pull that off. We'll, we'll wrap that up. Huh. Never been a talking hands video. This is kind of cool. And lay that to the side. And now we're gonna put on our next string. Be sure to look at your gauges. Make sure you're putting on the right string in the right spot. And gonna hook that on my tailpiece, make sure my hole is perpendicular. This time we have to go through this direction. We're gonna to go to the other side. So let me move that tuner. We're gonna to go to the other side, pull it fairly tight, come back around, gonna go under and up and back the way it's supposed to go and then tighten that up and let's see what we've got all right make sure everything's in the slots oh we forgot our graphite so we need to do some graphite well that's not super tight we can go ahead and put some graphite in that slot go and then we'll finish tuning that up so we we'll put our tuner on and that's supposed to be a B so we're it's close enough we'll trim our end here lay that aside 
scoot it down. Now we're going to do the final string, and I'm going to move you back to the to the tailpiece so you can watch how that works. First, though, let's let's loosen this one up. Go ahead and get that loose while we're here. You can buy a string winder. It's just a crank. I don't ever use one. And we got our string off. And now we're going to we'll wrap this one up. <laughs> and now we got our final string. We're going to add it. Go ahead and unwind it. Keep track of your ends. And the loop looks fine on it. So I'm just going to hook the loop on the hook best I can. And then I hold it and put that string under that foot, just like that. And if you've got a clamshell tailpiece, it works basically the same way. Uh, a Waverly type tailpiece, you know, your string will come over and then go down under a little bit. But that that's pretty much the way that works. So that's, that's all you need. I've got the hole there in a perpendicular direction. Gonna run that string through from the inside. Gonna pull it up, go backwards around the post, go under that one string, then lift it up and back around, and then we can tighten it up. If you break a string on stage, man, this is the way to do it. You can change a string in a hurry because you don't have to stand and wind and wind. Slide that string out, put a little bit of graphite in there. I don't know that the banjo needs it, but it's always a good thing to do. And there we got our graphite done. And Okay, so we got our strings on. We are ready to tune up. I went ahead and cut that extra bit off and wound it up, tossed it to the side. I've put my tuner on my banjo and we're ready to check our tuning one more time. Be sure to close your tailpiece cover. Just close that down and then let's tune up. So let's check, make sure everything is where it ought to be. Let's look at Once I get them tuned pretty close, I like to grab the strings at the 12th fret and just pull on them. Just a little bit. You're not going to break them, I promise you. And then we check our tuning again. And they should be a little flat. And they were. That just helps seat them. There's a lot of... There's a lot of places places where the string can maybe need to settle in around the post, at the tailpiece. And now we're in tune. Now, another thing that you'll want to do, if since we put on a different gauge string, we want to make sure our intonation, our bridge is in the right place. So what I like to do is I hit the open first string and I make sure that I'm in tune and then I fret that at the 12th fret, which would be an octave. So if that's a, if that's a D and I fret it at the 12th fret, it should still be a D. So that tells me my, my bridge is still in the right spot. Sometimes you may have to just adjust that a little bit. So at that point, I'm ready to put my picks on and see how it sounds. It's also good to tune it up while you're sitting up in a picking position because laying down is not the same as sitting in your lap. So that's gonna be different. So let's look. Now 
we got brand new strings. And we are ready to go. So now you know how to change strings on your banjo. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.